let's go back and mimic some other elements of this article. I'm going to skip the author info and the abstract for now and the subheader. I'm going to jump right down to the first paragraph of the article. Now to indicate a regular paragraph, we are going to use a new HTML tag. This one is called the P tag, P standing for paragraph. So there's our opening P tag. We're going to paste in all that content and then put in a closing P tag. Now we have to run this again. And you can see that on our new web page we have a headline and some actual article. Now you might stop me on this point and ask, hey, hey, wait a sec, you had just said that HTML is a language that describes concepts, not the way that things look. So why is it that in the result we see that the headline is indeed big and bold, while the regular content is small, non-bold letters? And that's an awesome question. And the answer to that is that by default, a web browser will try to guess how you want things to look. It knows that usually, in the real world, headlines appear much bigger and bolder than regular content. So by default, the browser is going to guess that for the headline, you want these big, bold letters. And then it's going to guess here. You'd want smaller, non-bold letters, since we've indicated that it's a regular paragraph of content. Now we can use CSS to totally change the way these things look. But by default, without any CSS, the browser does make some initial assumptions about how you want it to look. Let's go back to the Bitcoin article. And now let's put in this subheader that we've skipped. A subheader will go by an H2 tag. Now let's run that. And we see that we have big bold letters, but they're smaller than what we had in the big headline of the H1 tag. Now HTML actually comes with six types of subheaders, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. Each one represents something smaller than the previous one. So H1 is the biggest headline, the main title, the main headline of your page. H2 means the next level of heading. And then H3 is a subheader of the subheader. And it lets you have up to six nested subheaders. Now let's return to the Bitcoin article. I'm going to skip over the diagrams for now. And here we encounter this list. In HTML, this would be known as an ordered list because it's not just a list of things, but it has an order. It has order from 1 to 6. And here the order actually matters because the steps to run this network have to be done in this order. So this is an ordered list. Let me show you how to implement the HTML for an ordered list. For time's sake, I'm just going to grab the first three elements of this list. Let's go here to the bottom. The ordered list tag in HTML is OL. OL standing for ordered list. Let's create for now initial tag as well as the closing tag. Now for each item in the list, we need to create another tag within these OL tags. So now we're going to create ones called list items or li tags. I'm going to create an li tag for each of these items in this list. And I'm actually going to knock off these numbers here. And you'll see why in a moment. So here we have an ordered list, and let's see what happens when we run this. Let's run and scroll down, and we can see that here is our list, and it actually has numbers in there already. And that's because, again, by default, when the browser sees that you put in an order list, it says, hey, well, most people, when they have an order list, want numbers in the front of each item of their list. So it puts it there for you. Again, we can customize that with CSS, but this is the default. Well, let's return to our Bitcoin article once again. I'm going to skip down all the way to the code. 
HTML actually has a number of different tags that you can use for code. Well, let's just use the code tag for now. It's not going to look exactly as it appears here, but that's okay. I'll copy that. And now on the bottom over here, I'm going to create a new tag using the code tag. And let's run that. And if we scroll down, you can see that it actually prints the code in a different font, one that sort of is used typically to indicate code. So you're already starting to get the hang of HTML.